welcome to this week's preview show where Neil Perrett is alongside me in the media suite as we talk through all things AFC Bournemouth in the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll look back at last weekend's fantastic 2-1 win over Aston Villa. We'll also be joined by Dan Gosling on this week's show. And finally, we will look ahead to Sunday's big game at Bramall Lane. But first, we're going to start back at last weekend. It was a fantastic win here at Vitality Stadium, so let's remind ourselves of the goals. Rico to deliver the free kick. Swings in a whip and threw a ball brilliantly, but unfortunately goes past everybody. Francis keeps it in. He's got Harry Wilson core on the box to look for. Just delayed the ball, Francis. Swings across it himself. Gosling at the back post, nods it down, and then on to it! Trying to circumnavigate it. Harry Wilson straight into that wall. There's strong claims for handball. Breaks for Fraser. We tried to bend one in and then turned in for the rebound by Nathan Ake. And Bournemouth have entered themselves two goals in front just before half time. Fraser's low shot, beaten away by Rayner, but only into the path of Nathan Ake, who gobbled up the opportunity. And the Cherries lead Villa by two. as Grealish plays it into the penalty area now. Davis trying to turn his man, a block from Francis, spins up in the air, and the header's into the back of the net. Well, what a win that was here at Vitality Stadium. Neil, you were there, you were watching it. It was a, a brilliant performance, wasn't it? And we've now got back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League. Yeah, much needed back-to-back -back wins. Um, you know, before we played Brighton, things weren't looking too good. But all of a sudden, six points and, you know, the table's got a completely different complexion. OK, the FA Cup defeat was in the middle of those two games. Um, but, you know, there was a much-changed team. Some, some different players played in that. Um, you've got to say that the six points were probably deserved as well on the balance of playing both in, in, in t over the two games. And we'll start with the first half on Saturday, even before the goal. It took a while for it to come, but you know we were really on top and, and causing problems before then. Yeah, I think it's probably um, the most dominant first half display, certainly at home, that I can remember for, you know, for quite a long time. Um, you know, it was only a matter of time, I felt, before that first goal came. And once the first goal came, the second one followed quite soon after. Um, and you can, you know, Aston Villa were probably looking at it at half-time, thinking, um, you know, how are we ever going to get back into this game? And then, you know, sending off comes along and all of a sudden it's a completely different game. And that timing of the second goal, it was crucial, wasn't it? You know, just before half-time, we were looking to go in 1-0 up and we end up going in 2-0 up. Like Nathan Ake responded superbly. Do you know what, I, I think it doesn't happen very often, but the second goal was probably more of a relief than the first goal. I, I, that's a, I know that might, might sound a strange thing to say, but you know, all of a sudden when you've got a 2-0 cushion in a game like that, right on the stroke of half-time, you know, it's a real dagger for the away team to concede so late on in the first half. If they'd have gone in at 1-0, they might have been able to you know, think about retrieving the situation. But 2-0, you know, it does give you, you know, a bit of a mountain to climb. And um, like I said, it was, it was only the sending off that completely changed the, the course of the second half. Well, let's talk about that sending off. You know, there was half an hour to go when Jefferson Lerma got shown his second yellow card. What did you make of it? Well, um, I thought it looked really, really harsh at the time. I've seen it a number of times and it just gets even harsher and harsher every time you see it. You can see that uh, Jack, Jack Grealish clearly, you know, tries to scissor Jefferson Lerma and make it look a lot worse than it is. You know, you can't blame Jack Grealish for doing it. It's all, you know, all in the, in the game and this is what's going on these days. But, you know, very, very unfortunate for Jefferson Lerma to get a second yellow card. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of VAR. We saw Joel Ward get a straight red card in the Crystal Palace game, which was downgraded to a yellow card. 
well, why a yellow card, which leads to a red card, can't get downgraded or quashed in the same thing, I've got absolutely no idea because had that been referred to Stockley Park, you know, VAR, I think they certainly would have said, no, that's not even that's not even a booking and maybe not even a foul. And we talk about Jefferson, Jefferson Lerma's red card and the backs were against the wall for, for the last half an hour. They got their goal, but almost does that make the win even more special, even more rewarding? You know, they, they really did have to work hard for it and they, they dug in so deep in that second half. Yeah, I mean... Um you know, talking about us scoring at a bad time for Aston Villa just before the fir- at the end of the first half. You know, Aston Villa scoring with 20 minutes to go. They were in the ascendancy then. You know, you did worry that uh, a second and if you know maybe even a third goal could have followed because they were they were they were ramping up the pressure at, at that stage. But I think it just shows you how well we defended that there weren't too many clear cut chances after that that we gave away. Um, and you know, it was a fantastic effort with um, Simon Francis leading by example at the back. The captain, I think he's played at centre half against Brighton. Um, Chelsea and now against Aston Villa three games that we've won Um, you know what a fantastic performance that was and we talk about Simon Francis performance there are a number of superb individual performances Simon Francis Philip Billing had a good game and then Ryan Fraser he he got the the sponsors man of the match as well so he he you know had a a brilliant week too I think I said to somebody um, shortly after the game it was it was almost like the Bournemouth of old you know that um you know the the Bournemouth that used to have the momentum and the you know the spirit and everything that was there. It was a real. Um, I, I know the manager made reference to it being like one of the championship when we were in the championship and got promoted that season. The whole atmosphere around the ground, the supporters, the players, everybody was you know, and you could see what it meant to everybody at the end of the game. That massive huddle. Um, it was just a, a really special day and a really special win. And just finally on on Aston Villa, I think Chris Temple alluded to it on the show last week, the significance that that three points would bring, jumping out of the bottom three, leapfrogging Villa, and, and suddenly you can almost start to look up a little bit more than, than previously. Yeah, um, I think there's obviously a note of caution with saying things like that because, you know, we're, we're far from out of the woods and, you know, Aston Villa and Watford and you know, Norwich and Newcastle, everybody, or you can keep reeling off all these names of the people that are, really are still involved. It's a it's a relegation fight and it's, you know, it's going to go all the way to the last day of the season. I mean, I hope it doesn't, but I think it looks like it's going to, you know, look at everybody's fixtures, everybody's saying, well, you know, they've got to play them and them, but, you know, we've got to play them and, you know, we're talking about Liverpool and Manchester City away, West Ham with their next two fixtures, but we've got to go there as well. So, um, it really is a cliche, but it is going to be one game at a time, one you know, one win at a time, one result at a time, and you know, see where you are. Absolutely. Well, on Saturday after the game, you may have seen that the squad had a big huddle in front of the Steve Fletcher stand at the end, and Nathan Ake spoke to AFC BTV about what that was about. A special moment, I suppose, on the pitch with a big team talk. What was said in that? Yeah, basically, uh, Fletcher took it. Um, it was basically saying like. You know, people people write us off, obviously, from the outside, from the media. Uh, we know that, but we we have to remain focused ourselves. We know what we can do. We have to, we can only change the situation. Um, so yeah, that's it's been a good start so far, the last two games. Um, but it's not finished yet, so there's a long way to go, and we know that. So uh, we have to keep it going. Well, that was Nathan Ake speaking after the weekend win against Aston Villa. Now then, as you can see, we have been joined by Dan Gosling. Dan, thank you for joining us. Let's start back at last weekend. What a a brilliant win it was. Yeah, huge win. Um, You could feel the atmosphere sort of before the game. It was sort of everyone building up as a six-pointer. And and it was, I think, uh, beating Brighton and then sort of backing it up. It was was sort of a must-win and that's how we sort of started the game, um, the intensity that we played at. Obviously got the crowd involved, who was unbelievable on Saturday as well. And um, yeah, I think that was back at our energetic best. And after the game, what's, what was the mood like in that dressing room? Yeah, a bit of relief. Um, I think we totally dominated the game and then obviously a split second changed the course of it. And uh, in the end, obviously, we was, was hanging on a little bit. We could have scored the third right at the very very end, but it wasn't to be. But yeah, sort of sense of relief. Um, I think obviously if we even drew that game, it would have been travesty really um, it had been fairly undeserved uh, to draw but yeah to come away with the three points was, was huge it was a double celebration for you Dan you turned 30 on the day yeah yeah it was uh, couldn't have gone any better really um, I had a chance to score a goal and assist would have been perfect but yeah no the win was uh, top top the day off life begins at 30 is that what you're hoping for I've heard it a few times um, yeah no it's it's 
it's a milestone, um, one that I'm, I'm proud of, um, one that my family's proud of. Um, obviously, I've had a professional career since 16 now, so uh, yeah, played at the highest level for a number of years and uh, yeah, hopefully more to come. Obviously, on Saturday, we saw you playing a, a midfield three with Jefferson Lerma and Philip Billing. What's it like playing alongside those two? Yeah, no, it was good. Obviously, we, we've chopped and changed a little bit with the three. Um, but yeah, no, on the weekend, obviously, we I think we totally dominated that area of the field. Um, Jeff was behind us, sweeping things up and tackling people and doing what he does best. And then uh, me and Phil were sort of charging about, getting on the end of things, getting second balls, winning tackles. And uh, yeah, I think it worked really well on the weekend. And at this club, you know, we've got so many brilliant central central midfielders. We've got the likes of Lewis Cook and Andrew Sermon as well. Do you kind of all drive each other on and push each other to be the best you can be? Yeah, definitely. I think this year, that's arguably the strongest area of, of the team. I mean, we've all been fit all the same time, really, since I missed the start of the season. Um, we've had five five of us and uh, it, it's been tough, really, but that's what that's what you need, competition, and it, it makes you play well. And when you do have the shirt, it makes you feel, feel good about yourself that you're doing something right. Um, because if you do play in a three and there's two not playing, the two that aren't are great players. And uh, so you, you must be doing something right. We've all had a good chance to analyse Jeff's second yellow card. What what have you made of that, Dan? Yeah, and no, I've seen it once or twice. Um, yeah, it's very soft. I, I look back at the first half. I think Tyrone did probably exactly the same to me. Um, and well, that should have been a penalty. If that was a red card, it should be a penalty. But yeah, it wasn't to be. I think they were, they were looking for that. I said at half time, just be careful that that's what they'll try and do. And uh, yeah, Jack Grealish is obviously a very, very good and very clever player. But yeah, ultimately for me, it was very soft. I'm going to say he, he's uh, the villain of the piece quite often, but um, he certainly pulled the strings for them on Saturday. Yeah, they looked for him every moment of the game, really, especially when we went down to 10 men. Um, he was popping up everywhere and their first thought is, where, where is he? And he makes things happen. Um, he can put little balls through, play to feet, around the corner. He's, he's a very clever player. Um, but yeah, I think, think like we, we dealt with him well. Um, there's a couple of incidents in the first half. He coming on his right foot, a few dangerous balls. I know he hit the outside of the post. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I felt like we dealt with him well in this game. Just finally, I want to ask you about this weekend, Sheffield United they're having a, a fantastic season so far. How have preparations gone for, for you and the lads? Uh, yeah, no, we started today. Um, we was recovering yesterday. We started today. Obviously, the, everyone knows the system that they play. They they stick to their principles. And it's a it's a strange one, really, with, with centre-half sort of overlapping, uh, wing-backs and stuff like that. So to, to get a grips with that um, is key. Um, obviously, we played them first game here. And uh, yeah, they scored late on. Uh, we wasn't at our best that day, but try and hold on would, would have been massive. Um, but yeah, they've had a great start to Premier League life. It sort of reminds us of what we did our first season. Um, you can see the spirit that they have um, and their togetherness, and obviously the crowd there back their team. And yeah, they've done a fantastic job so far. And obviously there is the potential to make it three Premier League wins in a row. That'll be the first time since the 2015-16 that we've season that we've achieved that. Just what would that mean to you and the lads and what confidence would that bring to the squad? Yeah, it's quite incredible really. It goes back that far, but that's how tough this division is. Um, but yeah, it's a huge motivation for us to do that. We have a little break after that. So to sort of have that break after a win would be huge and to get that free on a bounce and sort of keep, Trying to move up the table and uh, get as many points on the board as soon as possible is is a huge motivation. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're ultimately looking to do. Well, Dan, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure we all wish you the best of luck on the weekend. Thank you. Now then, our attention does turn to that weekend game against Sheffield United. So let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. And then Aston Villa was a much improved overall performance where we showed our quality and how we can play. Yeah, and now we've got to go and prove it again. And I think that's the key thing. Now we've got, to, we've got to back it up a third time. But the lads seem in a very good place. I think they seem very focused on the challenge ahead. We know there's a long way to go. We haven't achieved anything yet. Um, we still have to win a lot more games. Josh King and Jack Stacey have trained this week, so they're both getting, uh, getting close. Uh, we'll have to make decisions on whether we involve them or not, um, but pleased with their progress. I think from behalf of the football club, a very, very strong message. I think we're very clear on our uh, opinion towards racism, of discrimination of any kind. Um, and I think it's um, the right thing to do. 
I think the winter break's a great idea for mainly for the international players. Um, I think it's, it's brilliant for them. Uh, as I say, I feel for them sometimes with their schedules, not just during the season, but in the summers as well. So they don't really get a chance to unwind. And I think this is a, a really good opportunity for them to do that. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking just an hour ago here in the media suite. Neil, looking ahead to this weekend's game against Sheffield United, everyone's been so impressed with them this season and, and rightly so. But what do we know about them? Well, I think I think they're a little bit like us when we, we you know, we got promoted to the Premier League for the first uh, in our first season in the Premier League. I mean, they they've been in the Premier League before. It was quite a long time ago now. It wasn't even the Premier League then, I don't think. But um, you know, it's they've been a bit. They surprised a few people, um, and that's exactly what we did in our first season. Um, people weren't used to how we were playing. They weren't used to our players, and that's exactly what it's been like with with Sheffield United. You could argue that they've been slightly more successful than we were in our first season. Obviously, they, you know, in the top five, top six, had some fantastic results both home and away. Um, so an absolutely formidable, formidable team to play wherever, home or away. And they're obviously very hard to break down. They've kept nine clean sheets in the Premier League so far this season, and that's that's the third highest in the league. So it's going to be awfully hard to get past them on, on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, you know, we saw the never day, never say die spirit from Sheffield United in, on the first day of the season when they came here. You know, he took the lead through Chris Meppham. And for all the world, it looked like we were going to hang on that day. But no, Billy Sharp um, came off the bench and scored that late equaliser. And fr from there, Sheffield United have just gone from strength to strength. You know, that's been the story of their season, if you like, was on the first day of the season. Never say die, you know, spirit, uh, you know, backs to the wall for certain periods of that game, but stuck to it and probably got what we, you, you could say just about was a, a deserved share of the spoils that day. Um, but yeah, they've got this unique style where they have what they, what they call overlapping centre halves, and you know it doesn't really give them a numerical advantage because I think a couple of the midfield players drop back. But you know it's very difficult for a manager to sort of prepare against that because you know normally you're preparing for conventional four four twos or you know three five twos or, or or whatever, and this is completely different. So you know every manager's had this you know twice twice the season, so that'll be something for the, the manager to sort out for this weekend. And they've got some some players that have really stood out from this season. We've obviously seen how good Lundstrom can be Ender Stevens overlapping from left back and someone we all know all too well is Lise Mousset who, who will face on, on Sunday Yeah um, you know Lise Mousset chances were limited here you know with Callum Wilson and, and Josh King ahead of him in the pecking order you know two you know two very prolific strikers for us at this club in the in our Premier League um, era so um, Lise had to sort of bide his time um, he had a few chances from the bench uh, but he's gone there and it's been a, a remarkable transformation. You know, it's horses for courses, different clubs, different players, different personnel, different surroundings. Uh, you know, all that all that comes into a professional footballer's makeup. Um, and Lees has obviously found himself quite comfortable in his, in his new surroundings. I think he's got five Premier League goals already. Um, yeah, and he's he's look, he's looked very very dangerous along with um, Fleck, who's got five goals for them as well. So, you know, like you said, they're d very dangerous opposition. And in terms of our team and our team news, looks like Jack Stacey and Joshua King are getting closer. It remains to be seen whether they'll feature this weekend. But even if they're in and around the squad, that's a massive boost to everyone, isn't it? Well, I mean, you, you you can see, you know, we've beaten Brighton, we've beaten Aston Villa, we've got players coming back from injury now. You know, it's it's just what the manager would want, you know, options, choices. You know, he can look at his bench and think, how can I change this game? How can I freshen up this game if I need to and stuff like that? And, you know, Joshua King and Jack Stacey, two players, very good players, both of them, uh, both had, you know, respective hamstring injuries from, from the Brighton game. Um, but what you know, what a great boost it will be if we can get them back in the squad. We don't know for certain yet. Um, it might be a game too soon. Uh, the manager might choose to give them another week off because we've got the winter break coming up. But we'll see. I mean, if they're back, then fantastic, great options for him. And someone who definitely won't feature is Jefferson Lerma after picking up that red card last weekend. He's been so consistent for us this season. But you know, we've got players that can step in. We've got the likes of. Dan Gosling, who we've just heard from, you know, obviously Philip Billing, who's been playing really well, and then Lewis Cook and Andrew Sermon, who perhaps haven't been getting the game time that they've wanted. Yeah, it's a strange one with um, Jefferson Lerma, because had he only had one yellow card against Aston Villa, he would have got a two-match ban. But now he's got two yellow cards, he's got a one-match ban. I know he's still got the nine... Uh, the nine match, the, the nine bookings hanging over him, and if he gets another booking, then that will be a two-match ban. But you know, just imagine if he now went from between now and the end of the season with no more bookings, then he wouldn't get that two-match ban. It's 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 a strange one. It's a bit of a quirky one, but yeah, like you said, I mean, you know, the people are queuing up to 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 take his place in midfield, and uh, 
you know, the door is open for somebody. If they can come in and stake a claim and play well against Sheffield United, then, uh, you know, the, the manager's proved it before that, you know, if you play well, you can keep the shirt. And just finally, it's another big one at, at Bramble Lane on Sunday. What's your score prediction? I think um, it's going to be a really good 1-1 draw. I think it's going to be a fantastic point for us. Well, a 1-1 draw and a, a fantastic point for us it would be. Now, if you are going up to Sheffield United, then have a very safe journey. But if not, make sure you keep an eye on our website and social media channels for the latest updates. Bye for now.